The story unfolds on the Korean Peninsula in 2024, a time of great turmoil in the region's international politics. When China is expanding its influence, clashing with Japan, while Western powers and Russia are also involved. In response, the divided Korean Peninsula unites to survive the invasion threat. However, this unity brings economic hardship due to sanctions, leading to widespread protests against the government's policies. Rebel groups like the sect emerge, rumored to be aided by China and equipped with weapons. Regular police are ineffective, leading to the creation of the Brigade, an anti-terrorist force. The Brigade manages to push back the sect, but an incident dubbed Bloody Friday sparks protests against them. Fifteen innocent girls hiding with the sect are killed, leading to widespread outrage. The sect's identity becomes shrouded in secrecy as they hide behind masks, haunted by their actions. Eel Lung, known as the Wolf Brigade, leads the fight against them in an ongoing war. Six years later, a young girl in a red sweater named Eun Su emerges from a tunnel and heads determinedly towards the city center through a bustling market. Amidst a massive protest against Korea's unification and the brigade's disbandment, officials suspect sect members among the demonstrators. Eun Su blends into the crowd, handing her bag to a man, signaling chaos to come. Unknown to officials, Eun Su's bag contains a dynamite bomb which sect members swiftly deploy, causing panic as explosions erupt. Amidst the chaos, the sect members engage in gunfire with the police, scattering the protesters. As drones are deployed and commanders issue orders, special police forces arrive, led by Mu Yul. Captain I am John Kyung takes charge of the mission to locate the sect's headquarters, the heart of their operations, marking a crucial moment in the ongoing conflict. Their objective is to crush the sect forces and obliterate their main stronghold. As the mission commences, the sect members rush back to their headquarters via the city tunnel, utilizing children as messengers. But as the alarm sounds, revealing their discovery, chaos ensues as everyone scrambles to evacuate. Leaders and members, including Unsu, flee towards the exit, leaving the teenagers behind to fend for themselves. Clad in armor, the troops locate the sect headquarters and set it ablaze. When the rebels converge at the exit, they are met by the brigade forces. Despite calls to surrender, the rebels resist, leading to a barrage of gunfire from the special forces, wiping out the entire sect faction. With no survivors, the brigade soldiers meticulously search the area for any remaining threats. Meanwhile, Unsu, who fled in a different direction, is apprehended. Clutching her bag in fear, she is identified by scanning devices, which reveal the explosive device concealed within and demand her to surrender. Additional troops arrived, armed with complete weapons, surrounding the area. Captain Zhang Kyun held back his comrades from firing, but Eun Su, in a reckless act, triggered her bomb. This tragic event haunted Zhang Kyun once more, as innocent lives were lost, echoing past nightmares. News of Eun Su's tragic event spread, fueling protests demanding the brigade's dissolution. Amidst the political uncertainty, the brigade became scapegoats, confined to their headquarters for four weeks, with all operations suspended indefinitely, frustrating their the brigade leaders. Jung Jin Tae was the commander of the brigade force training, and they were forced to halt their activities. Everything was in a difficult position, especially since the sect leaders and some of their key members were still at large. An investigative team from the Department of Public Security arrived at the brigade headquarters, probing the incident. Secretary of State Park John Key expressed support for the brigade, but cautioned Jean Tay to tread carefully, as the Department of Public Security was indeed pursuing the mistakes of the brigade group. John Kyun, still recovering from his injuries, received news that an old friend named Hun Sung Woo was seeking him out. Sung Woo, once a member of the brigade, had resigned after the tragic event of Bloody Friday. Now he led the Department of Public Security. Despite their differing roles, their friendship endured. Sung Wu arrived to deliver a diary recovered from the sect explosion site, belonging to Eun Su, the girl who perished in the blast. He entrusted Jong Kyung with delivering the diary to her surviving family, knowing he was the last to see her. Jong Kyung agreed to honor his friend's wish.
Within the diary were pictures of a strikingly beautiful young girl, and it was Eun Su's elder sister. Despite the brigade force being put on hold, they persisted with their training regimen. John Kyun, though still considered the top performer, was haunted by Eun Su's tragic demise, causing his focus to falter. Consequently, Commander Jean Tae relieved him of his duties. Seeking solace, John Kyun reached out to a girl named Lee Yoon Hee and arranged to meet her. From the moment he laid eyes on her, he was mesmerized by her beauty. Yoon Hee appeared delicate, and her lovely face instantly captured John Kyung's heart. John Kyung apologized for what happened that day, but Yoon Hee didn't blame him. She shared the sorrowful tale of Eun Su's transformation and departure, which led to her parents' subsequent illness and passing. Now only her younger brother remained, undergoing treatment at the hospital. John Kyung felt a deep connection with Yoon Hee, especially when she shared about her heart condition. Unsure of what to say, he simply listened attentively to her words. Yoon Hee, running her late father's bookshop to make ends meet, expressed gratitude for his willingness to meet her and harbored no resentment towards John Kyung. In fact, she invited him to visit her bookstore. As Commander Jean Teddy conducted an inspection of the barracks, he noticed John Kyung's absence from his bunk. On the way back, they ended up sharing a meal of noodles together. John Kyung couldn't help but admire Yoon Hee's lovely face in secret. At that time, in a country plagued by frequent power outages, Yoon Hee's modest bookstore served as her lifeline. That night, John Kyung listened intently to Yoon Hee's story, finding himself deeply affected by her gentle demeanor, something he hadn't experienced with other women before. As morning dawned, John Kyung had to bid farewell to Yoon Hee, returning to his barracks while she didn't head back to her bookstore. Instead, she met someone waiting for her in a car, Hun Sung Woo. Yoon Hee's presence with John Kyung was part of her role as a spy for the Department of Public Security, manipulated by Sung Woo. When she defied him, Sung Woo slapped her. Yoon Hee's true identity was that of a high-ranking sect official captured by the Department of Public Security. She had no choice but to comply because her sick brother was being monitored by the organization. This meant Eun Su wasn't Yoon Hee's real sister. Shortly after, Lee Ki Sok, the head of the Department of Public Security, and Police Commissioner Kim Mi Young Bae also entered. They talked about a secret unit suspected to be part of the brigade, known as Il Lung, the Wolf Brigade. Many officials opposing Korean unification had mysteriously disappeared, allegedly eliminated by this group. Il Lung operated independently under unified Korea's leadership posing a threat to those in power. So Sung Woo used Yoon Hee to uncover Il Lung's whereabouts and dismantle the brigade, as these officials feared the existence of Il Lung. On the other hand, Yoon Hee, who eager to visit her brother, was summoned by Sung Woo for an urgent task. She had to send a message to Jong Kyung, inviting him to meet for a date. Unbeknownst to her, Commander Jean Tae was already aware of their meeting and knew Yoon Hee's true identity. He dispatched Chol Jin, a member of the brigade, to monitor her movements. Not long after, Yoon Hee realized that she was being followed by a woman named Ku Mi Kyung, a high-ranking sect official. Confronting Mi Kyung in a corridor, Yoon Hee scolded her for disrupting her plans, while Mi Kyung accused her of being a government spy and betraying the Department of Public Security. Yoon Hee explained she was protecting her brother, but Mi Kyung remained skeptical. However, they both acknowledged being abandoned by the sect, leading to a heated argument. At the same time, Chol Jin overheard their conversation and reported to Commander Jin Tae. Upon learning that Mi Kyung, a wanted sect member, was with Yoon Hee, Commander Jin Tae ordered her arrest while instructing others to handle Yoon Hee. Yoon Hee handed Mi Kyung some money and advised her to lay low, warning her of imminent danger. Chol Jin trailed Mi Kyung closely, but she was aware of his presence. In a desperate attempt to escape, she fired shots, but Chol Jin swiftly overpowered her and apprehended her. Meanwhile, Hun Sung Woo directed the Department of Public Security Forces, instructing them on their next move. John Kyung was meet with Yoon Hee at the observatory tower, where they would stage a fake bomb threat to trap him. The plan involved blocking the exit and positioning anti-terror police to apprehend Jong Kyung 
when he attempted to escape via the elevator. Back at the brigade headquarters, Commander Jean Tay interrogated Mi Kyung. He revealed shocking information that would change her perspective. The leader of the southern division of the sect, Chol Yung, had been missing for a year and the sect's funding had been cut off. Surprisingly, it was discovered that the Department of Public Security was the secret financier behind the sect. There were incriminating photos showing the sect leader with the treasurer of the Department of Public Security. Furthermore, a year ago, a government inspection team was murdered and Yoon Hee was implicated as the recipient of sect funds. When she was arrested, Yoon Hee resisted and killed both inspectors. Sung Woo, who knew about the incident, then forced Yoon Hee into becoming a spy for the Department of Public Security by threatening her and using her sick brother as leverage. The Department of Public Security and the sect aimed to escalate the chaos to seize power. Lee ki Sok was behind this scheme because he didn't want a unified Korea. Now, Mi Kyung faced a choice. Commander Jean Tae offered her to find the sect leader, Chol Yong. Mi Kyung agreed, hoping for a fresh start afterward. Meanwhile, Jean Tae's subordinate signaled that the Department of Public Security was moving to capture Jong Kyung. Jean Tae ordered surveillance from a distance, confident that Jong Kyung would evade them. Jung Kyung was on his way to meet Yoon Hee. Before their meeting, Yoon Hee visited her younger brother, Jin So, at the hospital. Jin So's condition had forced Yoon Hee into spying for the Department of Public Security. She was willing to do anything for his survival. As they met, Jung Kyung sensed they were being watched. He noticed several suspicious individuals nearby. Yoon Hee glanced at her watch, then asked for permission to go to the restroom. Unbeknownst to her, Sung Woo instructed her to approach Jong Kyung and drop a gun in front of him. She wore a GPS tracker necklace and was promised this was her final task. But things took an unexpected turn when Mi Kyung intervened, advising her before swiftly leaving. But everything didn't go according to plan, and the Department of Public Security changed tactics, opting to ambush Jong Kyung. However, Jong Kyung proved formidable, swiftly neutralizing all the agents. Sung Woo and his team hurried to intervene, but Jung Kyung fought fiercely, allowing Yoon Hee to escape. Amidst the chaos, Jung Kyung ensured Yoon Hee's safety and devised a plan to escape. As gunfire erupted and the situation escalated, they found themselves surrounded by more Department of Public Security members and anti terrorist forces. Drones were dispatched to take down Jung Kyung and Yoon Hee ruthlessly, then they were lowered down with ropes. Yoon Hee trusted Jong Kyung's plan. Meanwhile, Sung Woo learned that Jong Kyung had escaped and rushed to the parking lot. Jong Kyung managed to hijack a Department of Public Security vehicle amidst a hail of bullets. Despite being cornered by Sung Woo, Jong Kyung fought back fiercely. Sung Woo halted his men and tried to reason with Jong Kyung privately, urging him to surrender. He offered to release Yoon Hee claiming she was sacrificed by the brigade and was actually a sect member planning an attack. Sung Woo promised their release after the brigade was disbanded. However, John Kyung had a plan of his own. Photos of John Kyung and Yoon Hee were swiftly circulated to the media as dangerous sect members. Lee ki Sok reprimanded Sung Woo for the failure and ordered them to be found and eliminated immediately to prevent the plan from being exposed. Sung Woo assured his boss that Yoon Hee was equipped with a GPS tracker and vowed to carry out the mission. Ki Sok warned that failure this time would have consequences. Jung Kyung quickly contacted Commander Jin Tae to assure him of their safety, and was instructed to head to Base 4 and await further orders. Despite Jung Kyung's insistence that Yoon Hee should leave, she adamantly refused, determined to stick by his side. Meanwhile, Sung Woo and his team monitored Yoon Hee's phone signal to track their movements. They continued their journey by taxi, but had to change cars to avoid a checkpoint due to heavy rain. As they neared their destination, Jung Kyung decided to seek refuge in an empty building and informed headquarters that reaching Base 4 might be impossible. Jung Kyung suggested that Yoon Hee could leave from Yongsen Station, but she chose to stay with him, opting to sleep by his side. She confessed that she had been manipulated by Sung Woo and had joined the sect out of desperation after losing her parents. 
Tearfully, she disclosed the Department of Public Security's criminal secrets from their recent encounter and admitted her genuine feelings for Zhang Kyung. Believing that Zhang Kyung had also been cast out from the brigade, Yoon He proposed they escape the city together for a chance at survival, leaving their past behind. As long as she and her younger brother were taken away from the city. However, Yoon He soon realized her mistake that Zhang Kyung had never been expelled from the brigade. Just as this dawned on her, a call from Commander Jean Tae changed their plans. They were to head to new coordinates together. Zhang Kyun hesitated, knowing that if Yoon He were caught by the brigade, she might not survive. But Jean Tae assured him that she would be taken care of. Yoon He understood that her dreams of being with Zhang Kyun were shattered. Activating her GPS necklace, she inadvertently exposed their location prompting the Department of Public Security to mobilize their forces under Sung Wu's command. As they arrived at the designated location, Yoon He followed John Kyung into an underground room, her mind filled with uncertainty. When she finally confessed about the GPS, John Kyung remained remarkably composed. Shortly after, they both heard approaching footsteps, and it was Commander Jean Tae and his brigade members ready to confront them. Yoon-Hee's heart raced as the suitcase revealed special armor meant for Zhang Kyung. Commander Jean Tae then confiscated her GPS necklace and exposed her true identity as a former sect leader turned Department of Public Security spy. Initially, they had played along with Yoon-Hee's ploy to uncover the Department of Public Security's plan, but now the truth emerged. Yoon-Hee had unwittingly become bait for the brigade to thwart the Department of Public Security and Jung Kyung was an eel lung of the Wolf Brigade, a secretive unit she had misjudged as heartless. Yoon He cried, realizing her misplaced love for him. As the Department of Public Security swarmed the area, chaos erupted. It was a trap, and the casualties mounted as Jung Kyung, alone but fully armed, faced the onslaught. Sung Woo seethed with anger as the Department of Public Security members fell one by one. Some pleaded for mercy, Unable to match Zhang Kyung's prowess, reinforcements arrived and Sung Wu descended with his special forces, ready to confront the Wolf Brigade. Using their GPS, they located Zhang Kyung, but they were no match for him. Even heavy weaponry couldn't stop him. Despite setting traps and engaging in shootouts, they couldn't defeat Zhang Kyung. Their attempts to ambush him along his route failed, with only a few of them surviving. The Eel Lung forces proved to be formidable opponents. Eventually, Sung Woo discovered Yoon He's GPS necklace, realizing they were the true targets, not Jong Kyung. Sung Woo baited Jong Kyung out, encountering a subordinate who begged for mercy. In a fit of rage, Sung Woo killed him, still believing he could defeat Jong Kyung. He was then cornered and laughed at his own foolishness, then met his tragic end. Yoon He was taken into custody by the brigade forces, surrounded by the grim reminder of the casualties. As she sat in the car, heading towards the brigade headquarters, despair clouded her expression. John Kyung knew her fate likely meant execution. Reflecting on their brief but significant moments together, he realized Yoon He's words were sincere. Unable to bear the thought of her death, John Kyung resolved to save her. All sect prisoners were marked for elimination, but Jung Kyun couldn't let Yoon He die. Suddenly, Jung Kyun intervened, confirming Commander Jean Tae's suspicions. He argued that since their goal of dismantling the Department of Public Security was achieved, Yoon He's execution was unnecessary. However, Jean Tae disagreed, insist that terrorists deserved no mercy. Despite the risk, Jung Kyun insisted on saving Yoon He, recognizing her as a victim of circumstance. After a tense exchange, Jean Tae agreed to cancel the execution if Jung Kyung defeated him in a one-on-one -on -one duel. Not long after, Jean Tae putting on his armor as Jung Kyung prepared himself mentally. Inside, Jung Kyung reproached Yoon Hee for not heeding his warnings to leave. Despite her involvement with the sect, her feelings were genuine. Tears flowed as they awaited Jean Tae's return. Once he re-entered, the duel commenced. Both fighters unleashed their full prowess, with Jean Tae mocking John Kyung's perceived weakness for a woman. However, John Kyung's resolve stemmed from his past guilt and his unexpected connection with Yoon Hee, marking a turning point in his life. 
This marked the moment when John Keung chose to break free from the constraints of the Eel Lung forces and live on his own terms. He relinquished his weapon, and Commander Jean Tay, who saw him as a brother and recognized his talents, couldn't bring himself to harm John Kyung. With a heavy heart, Jean Tay let John Kyung go, realizing that life had to move forward. As the sect leader exposed his collaboration with the Department of Public Security and Lee Ki Sok was arrested, Jean Tay resumed the training of the Eel Lung forces, focusing on their regeneration. Meanwhile, Yoon Hee and her brother left Seoul to start anew outside the city. Looking out the window, Yoon Hee spotted John Kyung accompanying her and decided to wait for him as he held her heart. She remained confident that they would be reunited soon. Eventually, their patience paid off, and the two lovers were finally reunited. Moral lesson from the story, just like how a banana peel might slip you up when you least expect it, sometimes the people you trust can turn out to be like a rotten banana in disguise. So, always keep your eyes peeled and watch out for any suspicious fruits.